Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video will going to be a simple full screen shader introduction type video. I was originally going to add this bit in my actual full screen effect video, then I realized that it won't going to be the only full screen shader video I'm going to create, so here we are. Okay, so if you guys know how to set up a full screen shader already, you can safely skip this video and probably have to wait a little bit longer for the actual effect video. Now first, let me take a moment to thank Prodi for asking and encouraging me to dive into this topic. You are breathtaking. For this, I am using Unity version 2022.3 and I have a project set up in URB. Now with that out of the way, let me roll the intro. First of all, let's create a shader graph. So, right click, create, shader graph, URP, and then full screen shader graph. Let's call it full screen graph. Now, let's create a material for it. So, keep our shader selected. Right click, create, material. Let's call it full screen. That's pretty easy. But now the question is where do we apply this material? We have to go to our renderer asset to assign our newly created material. If you don't know how to find it, go to edit, project settings, go to graphics tab. Here we can see the render pipeline asset we are using. Click on it and it will be highlighted in the project window. Select our pipeline asset. In the inspector, you can see the renderer we are currently using. Simply click on it to locate it in the project window. Select our renderer asset and in the inspector we will add a new renderer feature. For that go all the way down and hit this add renderer feature button and select full screen pass renderer feature. It will add this new renderer feature. Let's give a proper name. I will call it full screen pass. And in the pass material slot, we will apply our full screen material. Now this inject point determines after which pass we want our full screen effect to render. This before rendering transparent will render our effect once all the opaque objects in our skybox is rendered. Before rendering post processing will render our effect after it renders transparent objects and before any post processing is applied and this last after rendering post processing will render our effect after everything else is done rendering this requirement will allow our shader to use the additional passes and data none means no additional passes or data everything means all these Depth will enable our shader to access depth or scene depth values. Same goes for the normal. Color copies the color data off screen to the blit texture. And motion enables our shader to use motion vectors. Pass index determines the pass index for our material to use. It will be visible only if we have this. Show additional properties checked. Don't worry if all this is very new to you. We can get away without changing any of these settings unless we are going for a specific effect behavior. Okay, now I will just select inject point to before rendering post processing so that our effect will also receive the post processing we have applied in our scene. In the shader graph, let's go to graph inspector. In the graph settings, select the blend mode to alpha. Otherwise, this alpha block won't work. Okay, here let's go for a simple vignette effect. Now, some of you might think that we already have a vignette module available in our post processing and that's absolutely correct. But this is for just a demo, so bear with me. Let's create a tiling and offset node and feed it into the length node. Length node simply returns the length of a vector from the origin. In our tiling and offset, we have the origin at the bottom left. Let's set it to center by offsetting it to 
minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 it will give us this effect where the center is black and it becomes more white as we move towards the edges let's take our length nodes output and feed it into the power node power node will darken the values which are less than one as we increase the power we will control the power from the inspector so let's create a float property call it big net power give default value of 5 drag it in and assign it to the power node let's take our power nodes output and feed it into the alpha block now let's create a color property call it base color set the mode HDR give some default color drag it in we will multiply our base color with the power node let's take our multiply nodes output and feed it into the base color block that's it save our shader and we have this vignette effect that's pretty much the video if you find the video helpful consider like share and subscribe if you have any questions post them in the comments that's it from me and i will see you guys in the next one